More than half of all school-aged children living in the city of St. Louis are considered at risk. 41% live in poverty. A staggering 87% are raised by a single parent. And 70% of St. Louis public school students read below grade level. These predictors place them at risk for drug and alcohol abuse, dropping out of school, behavior problems, and violence. But a St. Louis-based organization is reaching out to these children. It's called Discovering Options, and they're helping children find better opportunities. But I wanted to kind of go around and see how everybody's day was today. I know everybody's got news, everybody's got stuff going on. So we're just gonna go around the room and everybody gets a minute to tell me how your day was. And I feel like after 12 years, I know a lot. I, have, I don't know everything, but I know what I know about the kids that I serve. I am very disturbed by the lack of support that a lot of the kids I serve seem to have. For all intents and purposes, a lot of times the kids are out there on their own, making decisions, solving problems in ways that are not safe, are not healthy. People of a certain generation grew up in a real community where if you were misbehaving, the neighbor did not have a problem calling your parent or calling you out on your behavior. Parents now, especially single parents, don't have that kind of support. So now if mom's working one or two jobs, the neighbors aren't watching your children. No one's looking out for you. <laughs> Discovering Options is a community-based nonprofit that delivers after-school programs to children living with one or more risk factors in the city of St. Louis. If you come from a family who doesn't have a lot of formal education and you're not exposed to the benefits of a higher education, that's a risk factor. Low connection to school, low connection to community, a parent who uses drugs, alcohol, parents who are way too young to parent. Those are all things that put children and families at risk for substance abuse, inappropriate sexual behavior, violence, that kind of thing. Prep, promoting responsibility through education and preparation is a 10 week long, four day a week, two hour a day, after school program that provides a series of activities designed to help at risk children develop problem solving skills, coping skills, um, decision making skills, and a sense of place in the community. The kids are here. On a good day, the bus will bring the kids from school here at four o'clock. And then we have wiggle time. We do yoga, cooking, nutrition. We have snack. And many times our snack has been provided by Whole Foods. We do lots of art. I think the thing that works about PrEP is that we have enough adults in the classroom that we can address problems as they arise. What have we been working on at PrEP ever since you guys have been here back in October? Stop Think and Go. Ah, oh, that's right! Ding, ding, stop, ding. Think and Go. Now, Silas, did you stop Think and Go before you hit that window? The kids that okay. we serve at the after school program are really, very aggressive. Really, really, really Most of them solve problems with their fists. Hit someone. When you live in a violent neighborhood and you see violence as a way to manage problems, to control people, to um, express your anger or your disappointment or your rage. And then for fun, you play violent video games. What is going to be your response when you have a conflict? going to talk about how we would handle it differently. <laughs> okay, all right, so just, so you're just going to ignore him, right? You're just going to ignore him, right? Stop it! Joseph, Joseph, look at <laughs> Most of them don't have the experience to solve problems through talking about it. For the entire 10-week program, we're repeating, stop, think, go. Forgive, forget it, let it go. It's not worth it. Oh, Miss Charmaine, I love her. She helps out a lot. And especially with Silas having like some issues as far as like uh, anger and everything and how to deal with other children. She started where she mails him letters. So he feels important, you know, knowing that he gets some mail each week. 
So that helped out a lot. You know, not just at school, but at home as well. I will stop thinking of. Tell us how you like it. Go ahead. We have been in partnership with the St. Louis University School of Public Health since 2006. And they are a very creative and invested group. So a couple of times during the session, the parents come on a Saturday and they bring all of their children and their spouses, whoever's living in the house with them, together as a family and they will make a healthy meal. We teach them how to put foods together that they never would have thought of how to make things that are easy and affordable. It's nice because then they leave with more information. We try to give kids the tools they need to make the decisions that will keep them safe. And they need to know that they're a part of this bigger community than what they see every day in their neighborhoods. I see your dimples when you smile. From Belize to Tanzania to Burma and almost everywhere in between, Wings of Hope is saving one country one day at a time. The worldwide charity, twice nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, operates 157 bases in 47 countries and has over 3,000 volunteers around the world. We can either go play golf every day or we can get down into the trenches with the poor and needy and make the world a better place as a result of that effort. And for the past 11 years, that's exactly what Doug Clements, the president of Wings of Hope, has been doing. We treat the fellow man the way that we would like to be treated. The good old fashioned golden rule is all that it is. Clements makes sure that happens by personally traveling to many of the bases throughout the year. We go and ask people what it is that they would like to accomplish. What, what are their dreams that they would like to dream? And then what can we do to help them realize those dreams? Wings of Hope, this is Ann, can I help you? Ann Vollen is the organization's administrative manager and helps to oversee it all. It's very humbling to work in a place that has so many wonderful volunteers that give their time to make this happen because without them we, we really couldn't do it. Wings of Hope was founded in 1962 by four businessmen who were pilots as hobbyists. They had a very basic policy. It would run on donations and volunteer workers only. So these four founders had a policy that we're going to work from the bottom up. We're going to take that whole dollar and we're going to go to that starving person, that dying person who needs health care, that person who needs education and opportunities, and we're going to start right there at that level and work our way up. To this day, that philosophy remains in place, making it one of the few charities in the United States to receive the highest four-star rating. Every dollar we spend, 90 cents of it goes to program services. Wings of Hope may have started with one small plane and a very narrow purpose, but today the humanitarian charity's mission is so much more. One of the most significant changes has been the addition of the St. Louis Medical Relief and Air Transport Program, also known as MAT. What we do is we transport mostly children, but really anybody of any, of any age that needs assistance. Um, we transport them at no charge as many times as they need it. People need access to this great American health care system, and they don't have access to it. And so Wings of Hope started offering the medical relief and their transport service to solve those problems. On a yearly basis, we make around 800 flights. The organization has both small and large air ambulances, all equipped with stretchers and certified airborne medical crews. Chief Pilot Dick Horowitz heads up the MAP program. This is really an opportunity to give back aviation-wise and to uh, help out my fellow men. For many, the help that Wings of Hope provides can mean the difference between life and death. Underneath two six left, cleared land winds three zero zero at one one. That's true for ten-year-old Alicia Reed, who suffers from a rare blood disease. They told her family that she was only expected to live until she was five, and she's 10 now. Alicia and her grandmother have flown with Wings of Hope over 80 times. 
We met the two during a routine layover in St. Louis. We gotta go this time now because her liver numbers are way elevated. So we're probably gonna biopsy it and pray to God that it's okay. Michelle Colgan believes without Wings of Hope, Alicia would not be alive today. She's survived so far. A lot of kids don't even make it as far as she has. It's life changing and a lot of people can't afford it. I mean, the average cost of an air ambulance service is anywhere between fifteen dollars and $40,000. Even people that do have money can't afford that kind of money that quickly. So we help everyone. When you're going through what we're going through, to take one worry off your mind is like a, a huge difference. It's huge. It's, we couldn't do it without them. You got to have your A game on to, to be at Wings of Hope. The volunteers that we really need are those that don't mind rolling up their sleeves and doing whatever it takes to move the ball downfield. Retired commercial airline A&P worker Paul Burtis understands that dedication. It is hard not to get involved in the stories of the patients that we fly. We get to see them and uh, uh, it kind of makes it worthwhile. You kind of uh, do your work and hold back the tears. I can't tell you how many kids who have gone someplace for treatment and we're taking them on their last ride. For as long as Alicia needs them, Wings of Hope will be there for her and for others like her. What did they put in? Blanket and the pillow are coming. It makes you realize why you come to work every day. To see the gratitude that people have is, is very moving. Dedication appears to be the link that all those connected with Wings of Hope have in common. You're dedicated to making the world a better place tomorrow because you do something today. To see that makes you realize that there is hope for the world, that the world can be a better place. If all of us make the effort, we'll get there. Take a good look inside your closet. Is it filled with shoes you don't wear anymore? Now you can make an impact in the world just by boxing up your worn out footwear. A Brentwood father and cancer survivor is on a mission to collect one million pairs of your old shoes. It's a mission he says will help literally thousands of people. Oh. There's no shortage of laughter in the Duffy household these days. Dan Duffy takes little for granted. No one ever expects to hear that the words you have cancer. At age 29, Duffy was diagnosed with stage three testicular cancer. It was a whirlwind. From the time I found the lump in my abdomen to the time I started chemotherapy, uh, and there was a biopsy and a porticat installed in, uh, in my upper, uh, like around the clavicle, was two weeks. And then I had 20 rounds of chemotherapy for four hours a day in the next 11 weeks. Spreading cancer education through films. Dan, a writer and video producer, had many emotional and physical struggles during his cancer battle. He wants to help others battling the disease. So he wrote a screenplay called Half and shared it with filmmaker and friend Joe Farmer. It's a semi-autobiographical comedy about Dan's adventure going through cancer. Both of my parents fed cancer. I've lost aunts and uncles to it. Um, and so a lot of people look at cancer as a truly terrible thing, and, and the disease itself really is. Um, but for a lot of people, and specifically for Dan, um, I really think it was a changing point in his life where it opened his eyes to seeing something in a different way. To fulfill their movie dream, Dan and his friends created the Half Fund, a not-for-profit mission dedicated to spreading cancer awareness through films, music, and books. The film Half is the first project. The Half Fund is a self-regenerative trust. So the idea is once the film gets made, we will release it in theaters and, and that's put in the budget. So that's an, an assured thing. And then those screenings will be used as a fundraiser. And so people can come and watch the movie. They can pay for their ticket. They can give us a donation. And all of the profits that the film makes get rolled back into the Half Fund and they get spread out to the new people that are going to be working on different projects. That's where the Million Pair Initiative comes in. Hi, my name is Dan Duffy. I'm a husband, a dad, a filmmaker, and a cancer survivor. I'm also the co-founder of an organization called The Half Fund, a not-for-profit mission dedicated to spreading cancer awareness through films and music and books. 
and I want your shoes. What size does she need? Last year, Dan traveled to Haiti to film a documentary on how shoes save lives. He was inspired by what he witnessed when he learned he could combine his desire to make a difference with his passion for his film about cancer, he and friends jumped at the chance. We can help hundreds of thousands, if not a million people around the world. Um, we can help the environment by keeping 40 tractor trailer loads of shoes just out of local landfills if we do this on a local level. And the half fund receives enough money to make our first project for every pound of shoes, an organization called Funds to Orgs will give the half fund a small fee. About five to six hundred bags of these shoes translates to about ten thousand dollars. I'm standing outside and filming the final footage and, and one of the people with us goes, you know, some of those kids will actually never go beyond the boundaries of this little space. And I just started bawling. That killed me. We just decided, okay, if we're going to do this, we're going to go big, we're going to make the film, we're going to collect the shoes, and uh, we are going to make the world a better place in so many ways. <laughs> and for each pair that you donate, you are going to be helping three amazing causes. Close friend Meredith Arns is helping to lead the collection effort. She's been Dan's friend since they were teenagers and was there through his battle with cancer. When I found out that Dan had cancer, um, I can say my honest reaction was that it was terrifying. It was terrifying to have somebody my age um, be shown their own mortality. She shares Dan's passion for his film, which she says will bring jobs and prestige to St. Louis. And she says the impact of the Million Pair Initiative is also widespread. It was very infectious. I really wanted to be involved and help him out in any way I could. Already, the response to the project has been overwhelming. Schools, businesses, and even some cities are holding shoe drives. The first two collections alone brought in 2,000 pairs. The amazing thing about shoes is that they save lives in so many ways that we don't even think about. Duffy says in countries like Tanzania, Guatemala, and Haiti, shoes are used to protect feet, but they're also used as currency. He knew of one young girl who traded her shoes for tuition. A woman who had a baby, but she was so malnourished, she couldn't nurse her baby. So she traded a pair of running shoes for a goat to provide milk for her child. Otherwise, her child was going to die. I mean, they have a strong will to live and survive, and they do what they have to do. Dan points out it's so easy for people to join his effort and make an impact on so many lives. Just clean out your closet and bag up your old shoes. It doesn't matter if you make a million dollars a year or if you make $10,000 a year. Everyone can save a life. All it takes is one pair of shoes. Each half fund project will also have a charity partner. With proceeds from the first film, half goes into the half trust. The other half will go to the American Cancer Society. If you would like to find out more about where you can drop off your old pairs of shoes, go to our website at hectv.org and we will have a link with locations.